I'm just glad he's paying me because Mike is just an Rolling. What? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, it's time for your weekly fix of funny. <sighs> Can I get another one of these? I'm gonna need this. I'm about to do this. Shit. So grab. Oh. I'm okay, I swallowed it. So grab a cocktail, take those pants off, and treat yourself to the sexy bald man that makes you tingle in your special place. Woo! I'm wrong! Got my mind on my money, my money on my mind, bitch! I'm house announcer Chet Jackson, and it's time for the Me, Mike, Self, and I show with Mike Bungard! Are we done? Yes. Me, Mike, Self, and I. It's me, Mike, Self, and I. You, are you ready to rock? Watch me, Mike, Self, and hi. <laughs> hello, 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 and welcome to another exciting episode of me, Mike, Self, and I, episode 142, 140, whoa, 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 coming back. See, all that excitement got everything blurry. That's crazy. Whoa. Live. This is what happens when you're live, ladies and gentlemen. I will never, ever figure out this problem. I don't know why, but I won't. And I, I, oh my goodness. What is going on? Who cares? Who cares? Let's read the comments. Not about me anyways. It's about the comments. I hope you guys watched the show already in the beginning. Uh, Dustin and I had a Kong versus uh, Godzilla reaction. What in the hell is going on? Whatever. I guess you're gonna have to look at my hand then. Mommy, hey everybody, how's it going? I'm me, Mike, self, and I. Mike's kind of blurry right now, and he's trying to figure it out. Let's see the comments. Chris Laird said, "I heard Jake Paul wants to fight and box Kong." Uh, that's so true, Lefty. What about Righty? Oh my God, this is too much. I can't do the whole show like this. I don't know what's going on, but I apologize, but it's not me, anyways. So <laughs> let's keep. Moving on. I'm I'm trust trust me, everybody. I'm adjusting, readjusting, adjusting again. Re there you go. Can you kind of come on? Come on, come on. I'm determined. I'm determined. I'm determined. It's worse. It's worse. What in the heck is going? Dustin, what is going on, dude? I was just texting or was just uh, messaging you. You might need to adjust your direct lighting. And I here. did, I did. I shifted it. I moved it. I, I adjusted it. I, I figured it out. I didn't figure it out. It, Let's just. You, you look like what everything looks like when I take my glasses off. There you go. Look, watch, watch. I'll do this again. I'm doing this again. Thank God for you, bro. I could not do this alone. <laughs> <laughs> It's worse. Wow. Yeah, it is getting like. It's getting worse. I, I progressively don't, worse. What is going on? This is weird. And I can't unplug and restart everything because well, we're yeah, live. And, and you were, it was clear, like honestly, five seconds. <laughs> do I look seconds clear? Before. Do I look clear far away? No, it, it actually looks worse further away. <laughs> oh my God. This is weird. This is so weird. It was just working a few minutes ago. Well, wait, go ahead. wait, bring your face super close to it. <laughs> That's how we're going to do the show. The hey, everybody. Thing. Welcome to Mike Bencourt Zoomed in. Yeah, it's a, it's your impression of Blair Witch Project. If we could get some snot running. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to meet myself and I. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm out of focus <laughs> and I don't know why <laughs> and according to Chris Lamel he says lol my eyes I know I'm trying I'm trying <laughs> and also he says you look like the owl, owl in the glass, the glass commercial <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. oh now we're upside down whoa we're oh. rotating. this is actually yeah. fun let's go this way <laughs> Welcome to East Germany, Mike. That's what it is. East Germany, Mike. Yeah. This is how we do it live. Yeah. We rocking here. Yes. 
Yeah, you, wouldn't be, okay. you wouldn't be Mike there. You would be Michelle. Michelle. Oh, there you go. There we go. That was actually really fun. I might have to do that all the time yeah, now. You just had to dance it out. There you go. You had an East European, yeah. East once Germany. Again, once again, East Germany solves all of our problems. Speaking of East Germany, you Matt, you know what? You're going to be here with me right now. So since you helped me out, thank you very much. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, you too. Speaking buddy. of races, first of all, first and foremost, <laughs> let's just say congratulations and welcome everybody to February for Black History Month. I'm not saying anything racist. I'm getting to the point, okay? I'm not. I know. I'm a comic. Are you going to say anything racist? No, I'm not. But I'm keeping Dustin here with me because he helped me. I know it sounds even worse. This it sounds I'm so afraid of what you're about to drag it's me. Nothing into. bad. It's nothing bad. I say I am all about Black History Month. I heard a lot of people say they don't want it. They think it's uh, bullshit because it's the shortest month of the year. They think it should be a part of history. I agree with them. But if we say it, we sound racist. But there's only one man that says it right. And this is what I found on the internet. That's what I was trying to get through. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, no, it's not as bad. <laughs> look at look what, what's that? Look at Chris Lamel from the United States Navy. Chris Lamel says, say <laughs> something racist. Something racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, but I'm not saying any racist. This is what this man has said about Black History Month, and you can argue with him or not. <laughs> Black History Month I'm ridiculous. Ridiculous. You're going to relegate my history to a month? <laughs> you do with yours. What, which month is life history? Well, no, 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 come on. Tell me. Uh, the, um, I'm Jewish. <laughs> oh. What is Jewish history month? Which yeah. month is Jewish history oh. month? Oh, why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no. No, I, 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 I don't either. <laughs> I don't want a black history month. He wants us Black to have visa. American history. How are we going to get rid of racism? And until... stop talking about it. <laughs> I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yeah. I feel like he's auditioning for something. Yeah, right. A black man. I know you as Mike Wallace. You know me as Morgan Freeman. You understand what I? I know this white guy named Mike Wallace. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. He, you know what? I don't believe him. I bet you a hundred bucks some point at his time in his life, he said this white guy, my friend, or something. I guarantee oh, that's a lie. Yeah, 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 that is yeah. a also, lie. <laughs> like, what's he doing? Is he just like purposely editing himself, even when he's alone around the house? Like, he doesn't call saltines crackers. Like, <laughs> like, come on, what? He calls them honky crisps. Come on, Morgan Freeman. Like, we know that you're saying at least a little bit. Of but we, but stuff. like again, could you imagine we just said that without Morgan Freeman? He's like, yeah. We think, Mike, we think about Black History Month. Ridiculous. Could you imagine yeah, if I said that? Yeah, yeah. If I, I don't quoted think, Morgan Freeman right now, yeah, with I don't what think he just we said, should get. A, I don't think they should get a month. You think you should get a month for being Jewish? That was <laughs> Wait, a, such a weird argument. First of all, first of all, he can get away with it because he's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> but I love how the I love that the white guy was like. Oh, I got to distance myself from being just white. So he was like, oh, I'm a Jew. I'm also a Jew. <laughs> so we're in the same boat, bud. And Morgan Freeman just wasn't having any of it. No, he's like, no. Because the first time I met Andy, that honky. Yeah, it did sound like it was doing... <laughs> it, it did sound like he was doing voiceover for a movie. He's like, it was. Yeah, what the, Michael does The first time know, I called a white man a honky. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when <laughs> he says he's not racist, but I know that he knows all the lyrics to a Tupac song and he doesn't knows edit all the himself. lyrics to Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna work on a Morgan Freeman now. <laughs> Just because <laughs> stop talking about it. That's racist. Doing. You can't do it. It's black voice. It's why that's black voice. Yeah, yeah. I it's it. why. That's why I I feel like Darth Vader is gonna get canceled any day now. Why Darth Vader's? That was James Earl Jones. Yeah, but when they took the helmet off, oh, uh, it's it's black voice. Yeah, but what a great black voice, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, come on. It doesn't get better than James Earl Jones. Yeah, dude, by the way, I was, uh, do you do you watch stuff like, like on Netflix? Do I watch? Yes, of course. Like streaming? Yeah. Okay. I was on there the other day, and it, it's bothering me that, uh, do you ever read the, like, one-sentence descriptions 
that they have um, to describe the movie. I'm convinced that they're written by people that have never seen the movie because I was like, one of them was uh, it's mano a mano when this roughneck uh, has a fist fight to the finish to save the earth, Bruce Willis and Armageddon. And I was like, that's not the movie Armageddon. And the reason why I brought it up is because the, the description for star Wars was um, a rageaholic tries to reconnect with his estranged children. <laughs> And I was like, what? <laughs> what? That was Star Wars. Where you're going is racist, and we're going to end off. <laughs> oh, no. But Dustin, thank you for helping me save the show, bro. I yeah, appreciate no problem, it. Buddy. You're going to stick around? I, I know yeah, we were supposed course, to do Dustin's thoughts, but you know what? We got to keep the show going, man. Yeah, we got enough of my thoughts. Okay, we'll we'll get back to you. Thank you, Dustin. I yeah, appreciate no problem, it. And you know what? I think we should bring uh, Eastern European Ge East German Mike. Yeah, sometime. Michelle. Eastern. Oh yeah, DJ Michelle. There you go. Welcome you, to Alex, DJ right? Michelle. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, let's keep the show going along. Um, I have a wonderful guest. She is an amazing human being. I've known her for so many years. I've known her mother. Her mother is the casting director of 4 Casting. Her and her mother worked together in 4 Casting. They both helped me get into the movie Traffic. What? With Paula Patton? Yes, because of them. I you know you see me at the very end just going, but still, you saw that real quick because of them. And I was forever grateful for that it was a lot of work just for that little tiny little spot but it's worth it because you have no idea what goes behind the scenes and i can't imagine how much crap they had to go through just to get my dumb ass on there like really no mike's really talented like this guy he can't even focus on his own podcast and you want him for a movie what anyways now she has moved on and she is now uh, an owner of her own fitness company but before we move on we're bringing her up i want to show her you guys her commercial so check this out i'm so proud of her and she's a wonderful person and here we go enough about me let's watch this thanks for everybody for being here by the way here My name's Cliff Huey, and i um, very active in working out, up to working with 4 Fitness and Miranda. Um, I've pretty much worked out, you know, my whole life, you know, off and on in the gym and, you know, playing sports and things like that. So on March, on March 1st, 2017, um, I was playing soccer, and I snapped my Achilles. And um, it was a devastating accident for me because it debilitated me and uh, became disabled. And... Um, you know, since then, um, I stopped all my workouts and uh, wasn't able to really go to the gym or do anything, you know, uh, on my own. Wasn't even motivated to do so. Um, then um, I met RCA Fitness, met Miranda, and, um, you know, she not only um, helped me get back on track, but she came to me, which was a big thing for me because um, I really had no, no motivation to do anything. I just wanted to walk again. I just, you know. When you have a disability like that, not being able to walk is a, is a big deal. Um, not only physically challenging, but mentally. Um, and so she kind of bridged that gap for me and, and helped me um, get back on track physically, mentally, emotionally. And I took my first steps uh, this last Thursday, um, 90 days after my accident, so three months. So I've actually been able to walk with a boot now. Um, and I feel that, you know, what Miranda's done for me and 4 Fitness has you know kept me going kept me on track the results that we went over were actually at my four week um mark and um some of the improvements that i saw was very surprised and actually impressed with not only myself but with miranda directing me with the food program and staying on it and that's a big thing you know it's easy to go to the gym and work out and not stay on your program and and i really tried to make sure that i did and in doing that, I lost a one and a half percent body fat, four weeks. Um, I lost two pounds, which, um, you know, is for me in, in, a, in a month's time period. Most of that, you know, I'm sure I gained a lot of muscle because I gained two inches in my biceps. I gained an inch and a half in my thighs. Um, and I gained, I think, an inch in my forearms, you know. So I, I saw results pretty much throughout my whole body. Um, and not being able to work out my leg because of my injury. Uh, was 
pretty impressive to me that I would gain that much in my thighs. So I'm very pleased, um, you know, with what, what we've accomplished and done. That is amazing. Okay, me, myself, and I. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? She's an entrepreneur. She's an associate producer. She's a ballet dancer. She was an actress. Now she's the owner of 4CA Fitness. Please put your hands together for Miranda Fossier. <laughs> Hello, Miss Miranda Fossier. Fossier. That's French, right? Fossier. French, Francais, oui, oui. <laughs> Bet and Croot in Francais, here, the Mig, myself, and I talking to you. Hello, good to see you. Bonjour, monsieur. Okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. Hi, how are you? Congratulations with everything. How's everything going with you? It's been such um, a long time. It has been a long time. It's been incredible. God is good. A lot of transitions, a lot of ebbs and flows in the last four years that I've been doing this, but uh, I, I'm happy to say that I am doing really well. So Has it been four years? Yeah, this March. Oh my God. Like, yeah. Well. Wow. I remember, and you have your own uh, center now. You have your own work gym. You used to drive uh, a, a truck around. Yeah. Uh, I used to, so my whole concept was a mobile personal trainer, right? And I did that up until honestly 2020 uh, when uh, COVID hit. And uh, then obviously, just like everyone else, I had to get creative, right? And so I transitioned into doing virtual training, but then I also wanted to provide a, a safe place for people to still come to where they, you know, didn't have to be in their home because everyone's in their homes all day, right? And right. that just really messes with your emotional and mental state. So I wanted to provide a space where people can come, feel safe. They're not going to be, you know, disturbed by anything. And, uh, and so I... I Turned my garage into a gym, and now that's kind of this is only a quarter of what you see. Um, I have a full setup here now where trainers can come and train their clients, and people can come and work out whenever they want. Oh, that's awesome! That's yeah. so cool. You yeah. gotta help me get my chicken legs to because I got <laughs> small. I tried everything, my legs are just like this, and I'm like <laughs> this, and I can't walk. So maybe you can help me get my chicken. Legs. Maybe there's hope. For me, yeah. <laughs> what is what is your negative outlook that you see a lot in fitness? A negative outlook is that I don't have time. I don't mm. have the capacity to do anything. I'm injured. I have all these ailments. I mean, the list goes on and on about negative uh, concepts. But no matter what, you can make a difference, even if it's a small one, right? We all got to start, start with a first step, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. That's great. So what made you decide to become the mogul who you are right now? What made you decide that? Uh, well, I started, I've always kind of been into, you know, athletics. I started off as a dancer, like you had mentioned. Uh, I started acting and dancing at a young age of seven. Um, danced all throughout high school. I went to a performing and fine arts high school, did all that. I even went to college and got my minor in dance kinesiology because I always thought like, well, maybe I'll be a dance teacher or something. I wanted to do something with teaching. I wanted to help people. And then uh, when I got my minor, I started focusing on my bachelor's in communication. And that's when I started gaining weight, like most people. Um, and so I started training with athletes, bodybuilders, personal trainers, and I discovered uh, physical fitness and how much that that really does change your body just by changing your nutrition and changing up the things that you do um, exercise-wise. Um, and then that kind of like just led into a lot of other life circumstances that came in. Um, I witnessed a pretty traumatic event where uh, I witnessed my father figure, you know, take his own life. And it was really rough, but it, it led me to come back to Sacramento and kind of start over. And I realized at that point that, you know, mental health is huge. And if anybody wants to make any kind of physical change in their life, they got to start with the mind. Um, you know, in order to raise your arm up, it doesn't take just your muscle. It takes your brain telling your muscle, right? So um, that's kind of where that kind of evolved. Um, I then started training for a, a local gym here, and then I got this idea to be a mobile personal trainer. Um, and then it just kind of evolved, like I said, and then now here I am. I still do mobile personal training, but now I offer, you know, a, a gym training too. So that's going to be a little bit of a cheaper rate. I do um, online training, virtual training. I, I try to meet everybody's needs because everybody is at a different level. Not mm. everybody is going to need the same kind of plan. And uh, I just kind of became what I am today. <laughs> so um, 
so you're studying, you're just more into studying the body and, and physical activity. Have you thought of creating your own style of uh, fitness? I mean, you know, I, I definitely am uh, different than most personal trainers for sure. I focus more on the mental and emotional health um, before the physical, like I had mentioned earlier, you know, it, it takes getting to this, uh, this place mentally and emotionally in order to get to where you want physically. You can't just like start running, you know, a marathon without getting yourself mentally prepared. You know, you is there anything that you can do to, to, uh, strengthen that, that, oh. that desire from someone that's just sits on the couch to they're like, well, I don't want to get up and do one step. I don't want to do, what is your method Absolutely. of changing I, I the mind? I, I emphasize the personal and personal training, right? So I really dig deep into my clients' like personal life. What's their schedule like? What's their work routine? What's their life like? Their their family like, right? Because all of those things play a huge factor into what kinds of goals that you're wanting to achieve. You can't a baby doesn't just like start running, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta start crawling, and then you walk. And there's these steps that you have to take. And I think a lot of people tend to jump. Um, a lot faster than they should, which will cause like injury and a lot slower in their uh, transformation progress, right? So I like to take things at a slower rate. I want to make sure that they are making the right steps and they're foundational because I essentially want to work myself out of a job, right? I want to make sure that nobody needs a personal trainer right. ever again. I want to teach you how to absorb um, you know, the tools that I have into your life and then that way you can be successful for the rest of your life. Right. So this is not just about money. This is about you just putting your place on earth, what you're here for, to condition men mental health and then help them become physically health healthy That's as well. Cool. Yes. <laughs> wow. Wow. You're doing God's work and I'm here just sitting in front of the camera. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So uh, after four years, last time I talked to you was, oh, God, it's been such a long time. What has, has happened in your life uh, since then? Oh my gosh. Since last time we talked to human beings. Oh, geez. Uh, I mean, uh, 2019 was a really tough year. Um, I, I too encountered a lot of health issues. Um, I almost died a few times myself and it caused a lot of turmoil mentally and emotionally for myself. So I definitely am a huge practice what I preach person. Hold um, on. How, how did you almost die? That's but that's kind of news to me right there. You're like, oh, by the way, Mike, I haven't talked to you in a while, but I almost died. Just want to drop that on on your show for the first time go ahead um, well, I had pneumonia pretty bad uh, in november of, of 2019 um i'm not sure if it was COVID or not but it was pretty severe i was hospitalized for about seven days um i was bedridden for five weeks and it was it was awful i i, I can't ex i can't explain what happened they don't really even know uh, but my lung collapsed at one point after they did a biopsy of uh, this mass that they found in my lung and it was this whole ordeal, but it really turned my life upside down, wondering, like, you know, what am I doing? I, I thought I was healthy. I thought I had things going. But, you know, that just goes to show you that, you know, life has a different story for you. And you just have to figure out how to be flexible. You know, you want to be strict with your destination, but you need to be flexible with your journey on how you right. get it. Um, and what you, the idea that you have for your life is not always going to be how it, it plays out, but your end goal is always going to be achieved. And my end goal has always been just to help as many people as possible. And I've definitely have, uh, have done that a few times in the last uh, four years. Wow. That's amazing. So what were you, uh, what were you thinking about your journey as you were going through the hospital, uh, as your lung collapsed and everything? Did you think uh, of a plan then or as you were starting to get better? No, I mean, my, my plan when I started for City Fitness was, um, you know, my, my father figure that passed away, he, I feel like he didn't really have that support that he necessarily needed to get through what he was challenged with. Um, which we all are challenged with something. And I just, I want to be that person. I want to be mm -hmm. someone, I want to be someone's rock, someone's cheerleader, you know, because everybody needs that. We all go through our own crap every day. Right. But it's nice to know that somebody else has been through something awful and has gone over it. And I guess that's always been something that I, I've been working towards. It's like, look, I'm not perfect. I'm still growing every single day. Um, but, you know, I, I every day I wake up trying to make, myself even better than I was yesterday. Okay. And I want to encourage other people to live just like that and know that look, you're gonna have you're gonna have struggles. You're gonna need down days. You're gonna need to give yourself 
those moments of just like release, but it's all about setting boundaries, really. It's like, hey, how many days do you need to mourn whatever you just went through? And then what's the next step to moving forward? Because the world is continuing to spin, you know, right. Even where yours seems to stop. And uh, it's how to grow from what has happened in your past to ignite what's going to give you your future, essentially. So when you're talking about um, boundaries, are you talking about that because sometimes a lot of people just give up on their fitness goals? They think it's just too much. Goals, relationship goals, work goals. I mean, I'm all about all of the goals, <laughs> you know? I mean, fitness is just one aspect, but I definitely, I, I've seen in the last four years for sure, a lot of people leave their own needs aside because of their kids or their their marriage or their work or something else is always more precedent than themselves. And what I've learned, you know, is that if you are not in that right space, place of mind or whatever that area is, you're not going to be able to get anywhere else. So it's about making sure if you have a need that you, you fill that need first and then you can help others and you can be great at your job or be that best mom or that best dad, boyfriend, you know, whatever you, your, your uh, title is in life, um, you know, and, and making sure that you can be the best of what you're wanting, but you have to first look within and be true to yourself. And the boundaries meaning like, you know, if you're sad, how many days do you need to get over something? But a lot of people don't think of that and they just dwell and they seep and they just fall lower and lower and lower versus like, right. hey, I'm going to give myself this time and then I'm going to try something new and see, you know, what else I can do to, to, to move on or whatever that case yeah. may be. Wow. Have you ever had a, a client that you almost gave up on? <laughs> 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 that you just said no more? <laughs> training only one in every five clients is actually going to take what you say seriously right mm. you have to keep in mind that like everyone's going through their own stuff and not just because you want to lose weight or you want to hit this physical goal doesn't necessarily mean that's the right time in your life to do it so it's all about and every time i, I get a new uh, client on i always ask like i, I always say like look Things are going to happen. All I ask is that you are open and honest with me so that, you know, I'm going to be open and honest with you. And if you're going through a hard time, maybe we need a pause. Maybe, you know, we need to pick up another time. But no matter what, I'm going to give you the tools. And the tools can be used now or they can be used in your future. And all I ask is that people are open to learning something new because uh, even if this isn't the right time, eventually it will be the right time. And so I've never given up on a client, but I have had moments where, you know, I, I've told the client, look, I, this just isn't the right time right now, right? So, like, use what I've given you so far, and then let's come back when, you know, things are a little bit easier because it is a whole new chapter. I tell people it's kind of like going to college. Like, if you are if you want to be a doctor, you can't just jump into the hospital room and pick up a scalpel, right? You have to go to school. You have to educate yourself. And that takes time, energy, you know, it takes money, right? So if you're not ready to take on a new chapter, then you're not ready to take on a new chapter. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is always something to learn in any chapter in your life, if that makes sense. I like how nice you were about the negative uh, client. <laughs> He's like, look, this isn't for you. So get the I fuck out of here. <laughs> That's what I'm trying <laughs> You're so, have you ever had a client that just got under your skin that you just uh, you, okay so yes so that is a yes and that's awesome you don't have to, you don't have to say it do you do you find it harder with male clients listening to your advice and instructions that is really good that's a really good point um yeah definitely uh male clients are mm, mm, uh, a highly qualified <laughs> fitness uh, a uh, trainer. It's hard especially because most of the male clients have been athletes in their previous like high school or college, right? And so listening to a younger person telling <laughs> them, like that's not correct is really right. hard. Which is another reason why in the very first meeting that I, I meet someone, I'd say, look, you've got to be open to learning something new. Times have changed. You know, every year things change. We discover new things about our bodies and health, and you have to be open to learning new things. But, you know, but not everybody is willing to do that. So, yeah, you never had the guys go, you don't have that this pose? You don't have this one? Oh, my God. You don't have that one? Oh. I lift weights like this. This oh, is yeah. how I do it. And I do curls that way. I, what are you going to teach me? That's a, that's a way to do it if you, uh, you know, want to hurt your knees or your back. Or, right. you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
hell? Oh gosh. That's, if you want to ruin everything in your body, sure, keep doing that. Yeah, right. Idiot. <laughs> Well, guess what? I always have my uh, correspondent, Mr. Dustin Wood. He's here, and he always likes to ask my guests uh, one amazing question. He's a great human being. Here he is, Mr. Dustin Wood. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Dustin. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I have to say I love your um, outlook. I I have a rare condition, and so I, I purposely live my life um, in the most positive way possible because the alternative – is negativity and it sucks and it just it you literally I can you can feel it shape every aspect of your life if you let it in so I think it's really cool that you have something based off of positivity I think it's something that should be taught like more is there something that you like you're teaching especially when it comes to positivity that you think should be maybe implemented more into like physical education in schools is there something that they're not doing there that you think they should be implementing? Uh, it's, a, it's a loaded question. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind when you ask that is uh, something that I, I wish most schools would uh, emphasize more is about, you know, preventing of injury, right? So like doing things the right way versus just teaching a kid to do something, letting them do it, and then moving on, right? I mean, uh, yeah. my, my cousin's 13. She sent me a video of her in her gym class doing a squat, and there was at least five things wrong. And all I can think of is, oh, my gosh, you are going to grow up learning these bad habits. And as you grow, your body is going to change, and it's just going to get worse, and you're going to create more issues for yourself down the line. So I wish people would take it a little bit slower, um, talk about, like, why certain, like, forms are um, necessary. You know, like, if you do this, then this is going to happen. So we want to make sure you don't. A lot of people aren't going to learn much if they don't know the why, right? Like, when you yeah. – it's essentially like when you're parenting. Um, I'm not a parent myself, but – uh, what I've learned from other people who are parents is, you know, if you tell a kid no, they're probably going to do it again. But if you tell them why not to do it, they're probably going to be like, oh, well, that makes sense. Like, yeah, I'm not going to do that, right? Yeah. So teaching that. Um, but as far as the positivity goes, it's being patient with yourself, right? A lot of people set such high expectations. You're being taught something, so you have to do it perfect right then, right now. But if, you know, teachers can uh, encourage students just to take their time in learning and just do small movements versus going all the way, like in a squat, instead of focusing on getting super low, just let's focus on like where the weight balance is supposed to be. Let's focus on where your core and your chest is supposed to be, right? Like just focusing on the smaller aspects first, then you're going to also encourage more positivity, like you were saying, and less negative, like, oh, well, you can't get low enough or et cetera, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, I would say. That's what I, uh, that's the one thing I remembered from PE class was we had a PE teacher that um, would pull, pull her gym shorts over her stomach as if it was like hiding it. Like, <laughs> like we were all just like, oh, that's her enormous vagina, not her huge stomach. Like it, it was so weird. And she always, um, she would, we would have to weigh ourselves at the beginning of every week and she would always go, Whenever I would get on the scale, and I'd be like, what? Okay. Dude, that's not <laughs> what I know. You're in gym class. You're trying to learn how to be active, not how to lose weight. And I mean, there's so much more that goes into losing weight, right? I mean, you yeah. Your, and your water intake, your supplements, like what kind of vitamins are you taking? Like, oh. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Oh, it's okay. It, don't it, feel it, bad for him because you know what? If he didn't go through that, he wouldn't be a hilarious comedian. So don't feel too bad. Say that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Don't don't <laughs> don't try to cash in on the sympathy card, Jesse. I'm just yeah. I'm Mike, not, Mike, I'm, Mike, shut up. So Robbie did anyways. <laughs> thank you, Dustin. Appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> I like it. He's like, Mike, Mike, shut up. <laughs> I was like, you're right. I will shut up. And then, <laughs> but stick around. Hold on, hold on. Dustin, stick around. Uh, stick around for the rest of the show, buddy. I got something for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Dustin's a great guy. He lost a lot of weight too. He's been working out. So, Aww. you know, he, he cares about his physical health and he was going through a lot and he uh, decided to, like you said, make that first goal and he's moving forward in life. And as well as you are, you, uh, you moved forward from, you know, where you are and now you got married or you're going to get married, right? Congratulations. Look at that. Bring it in. Bring it in. Let's see. Oh, 
Look at that. Oh, my God. It's The Rock. It's The Rock. <laughs> That's Sean Connery. Show us show it again. Look at it. Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage on The Rock. Look at that. No one's getting off that Alcatraz Island. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, How'd I'm, you? I'm so happy. That's all. No, you should be. That's all. How'd you meet him? Uh, oh tell us well, about him. Yeah. Well, his name is Mike. <laughs> Great name. Show yeah. is named after him. I, you know, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, no, his name is Mike. He's a, um, the creator and owner of the Waffle Experience, which is um, a restaurant in Natomas, Folsom, and Oak Grove. And they're expanding to Southern In Elk Grove? Grove? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I'm going to eat there. If anyone's looking to franchise, um, it's an incredible restaurant. Uh, it's breakfast and lunch. It's all about waffles, but it's like a dough based waffles. So it's like a bread texture. It's so everything has a waffle on it. It's amazing. But I mean, that goes beyond like his, his, uh, his attributes. I mean, he's just the most incredible partner I have ever met. He, we were best friends first before we started dating. And that's awesome. Uh, and he proposed to me in Costa Rica. And, I'm just oh like, my God! In Costa, with the Rock and in Costa Rica, man, gentlemen, we have lost. You cannot <laughs> top that. <laughs> That's amazing. So I would say yes for you. Just say it. Go. <laughs> yeah. Where is he? Is he? Is he? Is he here? Can he say hello? Yeah. Well, he's doing some behind the scenes footage for me. Okay. Well, thank you, Mike. Great name. <laughs> Excellent name. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's uh, what's plans with the Waffle Experience? What, what are your... Um, so, I mean, uh, I, I spent the last few months as a hiatus for Four Safe and it's just to help kind of get the restaurant up and going. As you know, with COVID, everything has been really tough. Um, but, you know, Mike is just an incredible... I mean, well, he's a Marine, uh, or he is a Marine. Um, nice. Before, before he got into the food industry and so he's just a fighter um, and he really stood up for small businesses during COVID and you know encouraging people to stand up for their right which it is the right to own a small business and um, so with the second shutdown you know he, he really stood up and encouraged people to stay open and we stayed open while keeping safe of course um, well yeah you have a marine ordering orders to stay open you might as well, you have to listen to him oh yeah you well, need yeah. to stay open we had, we had so many people <laughs> helping us uh yeah it was board supervisors kevin kiley everybody was on our side which was awesome wow um so yeah now it's up and running so i'm able to focus back on uh, on my business here we got a lot of really good things going on i'm opening up the space to other personal trainers to use other people to come in I'm doing some programs um, that I've created for like beginners and then uh, what I'm calling the level up. So people who are wanting to take their fitness to the next stage, um, really just trying to get back out there and let people know that we're, you know, I'm here and I want to help if anybody is, uh, is looking for that. How genius is this monopoly? I mean, he gets them full with high cholesterol at the waffle <laughs> experience <laughs> and then you take them <laughs> handing out cards as they leave the restaurant, don't worry about your health. I'm yeah. here to help you out. Genius. Yeah, hey, you know, that is a genius yeah. idea. I wish I thought of that. that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. great. This is a cheat day restaurant for sure. Yeah. Oh my God. That is amazing. Talk about the mafia. Wow. <laughs> we'll get you fat and thin at the same time. No yeah. problem. No yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> High cholesterol, and then you'll get ripped after you have your first heart attack. No hey. problem. <laughs> hey, you gotta put on the games first, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. That is awesome. <laughs> Cheat day is a great name for a restaurant. <laughs> there you go. Write that one down. Yeah. Right there, you go. Cheat day. After you're done getting your ass kicked by Miranda, it's time yeah. for cheat day. <laughs> we have some protein waffles. Don't worry. Yeah. That's <laughs> so cool. Wow. Sorry. And and you guys are going to be running everything. And then you said uh, you're going to be moving soon, right? Yeah. Well, so, um, you know, Mike is the CEO and president. So it's, it's not his job to run everything. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we're essentially, we're opening up our headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia, um, and that's going to be run by uh, our COO. Um, and then Mike and I are going to just pretty much kind of do our own thing. I want to open up a gym. Uh, at, we're planning on moving to Costa Rica. Nice. Um, Full really circle fun. again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I uh, want to open up a gym there, maybe a taco truck. But, you know, Mike just wants to, to travel and open up the franchises, teach people how to cook the menu and, 
and do that as uh, as we just you know enjoy our life. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Oh, by the way, uh, from the United States Navy, Brian Harlan says love cheat day. So mm -hmm. there you go. It's already starting. There's mm -hmm. your side business, side hustle. Yeah, that's what we'll <laughs> that's... do in Costa Rica. We'll open up a cheat day and we'll open it right next to my gym. There you go. The, the uh like a like a roach coach right outside your gym it's cheat day you don't need to go in or you can go out come on <laughs> cheat day god genius. manipulating the whole system that's genius yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well do you have any words of wisdom for your for people that are in, trying to be, get inspired by you or or that yeah, want to absolutely I, I get asked this all the time you know like what's the, uh, what's a great first step uh you know a great first step is first of all Focus on your nutrition, right? If you don't have time to work out, not a big deal. I've been injured. Oh my gosh. Okay. So starting with less last year with my lung issue, I mean, that took several months in order for me just to walk normal, <laughs> right? So between that, I, I had a partial tear in my meniscus. I broke my pinky toe. I mean, I've oh. had like four injuries in the last year, but I was, I've been able to keep my physique all because of diet. And it's super simple. All you guys have to do is just no processed foods, right? So just keep it simple. Uh, no dairy, no gluten, and then keep your sugars only to the natural ones like fruit. And you keep that right in the morning, right? So that kickstarts your metabolism. Um, a lot of people benefit from intermittent fasting. Uh, the problem with that is a lot of people don't realize that you have to stuff a whole day's worth of meals into an eight hour period. So that's where mm -hmm. kind of the intermittent fasting doesn't work completely for a lot of people you need to make sure you know how to work that but essentially just stick to a paleo diet that's essentially what i have all my clients start with is just meat uh you got some vegetables you got some potatoes your seeds and nuts and they said on fruit right so you got your cup of fruit in the morning and just start there right just start cutting out all the processed stuff and meal prepping i swear to god it is the best thing that you can do for yourself i'm so lazy when it comes to meal prepping ah oh, i'm the my wife and i are the worst we're the worst i uh oh, okay. i hate it you can spend two hours a day cooking all of your meals or you can spend three hours a week cooking your meals, okay? And then all you gotta do is you just pop it in the microwave when you're hungry, right? When you're hungry, that's when you usually make the worst mistakes, right? You usually you usually go for something really do. Quick and quick, right? But if it's Oreos. Or you just grab it, throw it in the microwave. And then you change up how you cook your meals every single week to keep it interesting. But it is, it, you know, and it's really frustrating and annoying, but I tell my clients, it's not forever, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just until you get to your goals. So the, the more strict you are, the faster you get to your goals and the less, or the, the faster you can stop meal prepping, right? And you can be a little mm -hmm. more flexible. But it, I mean, we essentially cook, you know, three meals a day, essentially for a week. And then we're kind of flexible with our breakfast and our dinner. And we kind of like ebb and flow, right? And we keep it because we're essentially where we're happy with where we are right now. But, you know, we're going to start prepping for our wedding. So we're going to start getting a little more strict, but it's just in seasons. It's all a season. Everybody kind of gets wrapped up in this forever mindset. Yeah, that's what I always think. Like, it's going to be forever. I think that's the worst part is like, I, I, uh, I, it, there's like no light at the end of the tunnel when I think of that. And that's the negativity. All right, so we need to get some positivity in you, Mike Bancourt. Hold on, there he goes, positivity from right there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what I would recommend is just start by cutting out all the processed foods, and you'll notice a huge difference. And, and drink enough water. Like I, I have this uh, half a gallon. Uh, it's a sixty-four ounce water jug. I put my aminos in it once a day. I just fill it all the way up. And then when it gets halfway, I fill it back up so my aminos stay with me. And uh, aminos are really essential in weight loss, muscle growth, endurance, helps kind of curb your appetite and gives your water some flavor. Which what do you use for uh, aminos? Um, so I am a, a rep for a company called Ambrosia. So Ambrosia Collective, if you use my discount code 4 C A. Fit. So oh, that's dope. 4 C A. Uh, fit. That is... That's like pro wrestling when they're like 4CA. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so cool. 4CA. Yes, Hold on, Dustin. 4CA. I know. I'm like literally typing it out right now. <laughs> that is so That's cool. Brilliant. That is great. Right. Let's do it, Dustin. 4CA. 4CA. I knew I should have made that <laughs> That is yeah. so good. Yeah, so 
Ambrosia Collective has a lot of really great stuff. I mean, there's tons of great supplements out there. So this definitely isn't the only one, but like the one that I use is that it's called Machine Fuel. It's a mm-hmm. AA, which is branched chain amino acids. But they also have really amazing protein powder. It's plant-based, lactose-free, gluten-free, essentially nothing except vitamins and minerals and protein. Is really awesome. Um, you know, I even make it like an ice cream at night. Like you just blend it up with some uh, ice and water, and it gets like thick, like an ice cream texture. I mean, it's not exactly ice cream, but it's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I recommend. Wow. Well, thank. That is such a. You know what? I, I hope you, this podcast inspires everybody because this has been wonderful and great. Everything. I'm so proud of you and so happy for you and your husband to be. You guys are going to have a wonderful life together. That's awesome. And I want to bring uh, Dustin back. Dustin, so check this out. So last week, we did the game show. Okay, Dustin, you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, okay. I can hear you. I'm just worried. So, <laughs> this is the, we're going to try it the second week. Okay, here it is. Hang in there. This, this is our, our game show that we played. Okay. <laughs> me, myself, and I present Name That Voice. Okay, name that voice is I do an impression. And if you get the name of the actor, because I can't oh, do actresses no. yet, if you get the name of the actor, you will win a prize. And the prize last week, I'll do it. All right, I'm going to do it, Dustin. We're going to give you $100. That's either $50 donation to 4CE Fitness and $50 donation to the Waffle Experience. If you get it right, if you get the name right, uh, last week we tried, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to do a different voice, Dustin. But okay. if they don't get it, Dustin, I'm going to put the pressure on Dustin. If they don't get it, what should we give them? Okay. Um, and it's got to be towards 4CA because 4CA, you can't top that. We have, yeah, to, um, we have to give something. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. If they don't get it, why don't we do a paid promotion video for their products and we'll post it on, on our social medias. I was going to say give less money, but sure, we can do that. Oh, yeah. yeah, or that. <laughs> I, was I, just, well, I was just going to say give some money. less money. But... I didn't want to give away your money. So I'm just like... <laughs> hey, no, let's just do $50 then, I guess. Okay, so $50, so $25. To 4 CA fitness, fitness and 25 to uh, the Waffle Experience if you don't get it right. If you get it right, it's 100 bucks. So that's 50 each. Okay. No, wait. Is it me guessing? No, I'm guessing. Oh. I do the impression and then I guess the, the voice. Wait, why would you guess? <laughs> I'm just you're doing your voice. <laughs> I got both of you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I got both of you. Okay, but maybe, but maybe Costa Rica Mike can also help her. Of course, of course, he, he's a, of course. For Costa Rica Mike <laughs> can, can help. Okay, here we go. So here's the impression. You have to name the voice, not the character, but the actor. The actor. Okay. Are you ready? All right, I'm ready. Hundred dollars on the line. Here we go. <clears throat> are you gonna bark all day, little doggy? Or are you gonna bite? What? What's that? Come again? What? Clint Eastwood. Oh, cool. actually, you know what? It has his moves. It That's does. Really, it's actually Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen <laughs> from Reservoir Dogs. Are you gonna bark all day, little doggy? <laughs> I think the face, my face, my Clint Eastwood facial expression threw you off. You yeah, you were pointing it up a bit with the eye. I was. I'm, I apologize. But still, you still get money donated to For Safe Fitness and the Waffle Experience. And if you want us to do a promotion video, we can for you. So thank you so much. <laughs> oh, look, even Rudy Moreno said it was Clint Eastwood. Damn, yeah, I still right. get impressions. He also guessed a fat guy. Rudy, I wasn't doing an impression. I'm just a person. A fat guy. I, <laughs> a little rude. <laughs> he says Dolly Parton? Dolly Parton? <laughs> Is that the fat guy? Or 
<laughs> now he's talking about my breast size. This is ridiculous. This is getting kind of creepy. It's awesome. But thank you. <laughs> Uh, Miranda, th- did you have a good time? Oh, always. Thank you so much, you guys, for having me. I really appreciate yes. it. Yes. Always. Thank you very much for being on the show. I can't. I don't know why StreamYard's not working, but it won't allow me to type your links right now. So, folks, if you can, if you just joined in, please watch the rebroadcast on YouTube.com slash Mike B. Comedy. All of 4 C A. Uh, all of her stuff will be on there as well. Links and bios. Everything's going to be on that, and then we'll be promote it to everybody else so miranda thank you very very much i really appreciate it and uh i always like to leave the show on a prayer not by me but by uh sam elliott and now a prayer from sam elliott dear heavenly father give me the strength for i don't have any patience for stupidity anymore Everywhere I go, I see someone doing something stupid. I just want to smack them across the head, but I can't, dear father. For you are the dude of this universe. Dear Lord, we're in a pandemic and I'm starting to lose my cool. All I want to do is sit in my leather chair, smoke a marble red, and drink a beer. Of course, America's beer. Lone Star Barbecue. Amen. That is awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Four. Let's do it, Dustin. Let's do her. Four. C. A. Four. C. A. Four. C. A. Me, myself, and I. Four. C. A. Thank you so much, Miranda Forcier. Really appreciate you being on the show. Me, Force myself, and Don't and forget I. the Walker experience. One more time for Dustin Wood, the adorable. Me, I don't know why she didn't know it's not working right now. I can't post the, the wonderful clips and everything. I apologize, but it's okay. It's all right. Thank you, everyone, for staying with me during this weird time. And you got and you met a new character. You met East German Mike Bettencourt. Yeah. Yeah is good. Yeah. And here it is. 4CA, it's in the game. Oh my God! There's your tagline. 4CA, it's in the it's in the gym. There you go. 4CA, it's in the gym. Oh my God! She's gonna be a gajillionaire. Wow! Remember where she got her millions? Here, on me, myself, and I. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next week.